Step in. here. Very happy to have Mama Solo in the building right now. How are you? I'm great, man. You can't complain. You were here just uh, just not too long ago. And, and what I love about you is you're all about the city and you're all about positivity. Absolutely. And I love that about you. Uh, another thing that I love about you is that you always speak your mind. That's what it's always been. Um, and introduce introduce your uh, your friend in here. Oh, this is my musical director from the Nuts, G Dash. Yo, 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 what's up? Go ahead and get close to the mic, man. There you go. See, he's there playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I need. Let me know what's going on. Yes. So, uh, so we're here today because uh, you know there's a lot of artists that have come out with uh, with uh, music as far as the Flint Water Crisis goes, which I think is awesome. It uh, mm -hmm. it brings awareness. Um, whether your fan base is more street music, whether it's uh, you know all sorts of different genres of music have come together Absolutely. for this Flint Water Crisis. And uh, the one thing that I noticed with your song, it's so different compared to compared to what you normally do. Mm. It's 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 hard. It's got to. I mean, all of your songs have emotion, but this one especially. Go ahead and talk about "Hard to Swallow." Your your song about the Flint Water Crisis. Well, I, I was angry. You know. Yeah. I, I'm affected by this. That's the difference. You know. And I appreciate everything that everyone is doing for our city. Mm -hmm. But when you are living through this crisis and you really have to get up and. It's three people in my house, and each one of us need three gallons of water a day just to wash up. And I'm constantly over my kid's shoulder, who's an athlete and is in gyms, and the water faucets are on to continue to remind him that that water is poison. And right. you know, you're you're familiar with the Tuskegee experiment, and you're you're familiar with population control, and you're familiar with mass poisoning and genocide. It angers you to actually experience that. You know. Now let's talk about that experiment. Let's. Uh, I, I want you to talk about. You know, a lot of people think that it is just, oh, it's just a water crisis. It's mm -hmm. something that, you know, it happens and uh, this doesn't happen in every city. No. Nah. And, and what was interesting about the uh, community forum that I went to yesterday for Bernie Sanders, the second most, uh, uh, most uh, poorest <coughs> city in the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to start wondering, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, well, this isn't just something, this isn't happening in Lansing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, or in the Hamptons. Yeah. You it, know. <laughs> it's something that's happening in Flint. And, mm -hmm. and people can say it's a conspiracy, but what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, when you talk about population control. I mean, I, I actually told a friend of mine about five years ago, I said Flint is a primary target for population control because of the crime rate in Flint, as well as the uh, unemployment rate and the high rate of felons. Mm -hmm. And so don't be surprised if something happens here, you know, like a Hurricane Katrina. And this was about five years ago, just, just building. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you look at things like the Tuskegee experiment, where they literally experimented with syphilis on several African-American males in the community, and they came out thinking it was something other than what it really was. Right. And so, you know, to send a boil water advisory out with your water bill, not knowing that that increases is the lead level in the water when you boil it mm -hmm. is you know like why would you send that yeah right. you know what i'm saying so it, it's kind of like where wh what's really going on i think know? it's i think it's educating people too because what was so interesting about this community forum yesterday was it was and, and it's more than just you know one form to where you know a, a presidential candidate comes in and you know it, it was more learning about what's really going on mm -hmm. to where you know it's more than just the lead it's the legionnaires it's the other diseases e coli, e -coli. Several, <laughs> several elements in that water where you just it's only good for flushing your toilet right That's the only thing we can use it for you know and yeah. i was in the refugee camps in africa man mm -hmm. and when i wrote thankful the first line of that song says i'm thankful for the fact that i can turn on a tap and have fresh water just because of what I was going through in Somalia and the dab in Mogadishu, I was just like in my hotel room, like, let me write a song about being grateful for simple things. Mm -hmm. And so to be at home in the United States, surrounded by the Great Lakes and not have right. fresh water and we pay a bill. And what year was that when you when you wrote that? I wrote that about, what, four years ago? Did you ever think Five that that two years later, three years later, Flint would be in this situation? Mm. No. At least not at the level not that it's at, at this now. Level. No, because no. now it's at a level to where there is. I hate to say, it, but the amount of bottled water from everyone around the country—it's great, but it doesn't fix the situation. A million bottles of water is equivalent to one pot of soup for every household in Flint. 